Unless we put medical freedom into the Constitution, the time will come when medicine will organize itself into an undercover dictatorship to restrict the art of healing to one class of men or companies and deny equal privileges to others will constitute the Bastille of medical science. That's my first round of chemo that hasn't been hooked up yet. I just got to the hospital. Just being here, even not being hooked up, makes me nauseous, makes me feel unwell. Just to be in the hospital, this place of healing has become a place of pain for me. This video will be based on the work of many doctors and researchers who've defected from the monetized fraud that is Western medicine. Those doctors include, but are not limited to, the work of Dr. Peter Glidden, Dr. Andrew Kaufman, and Dr. Leonard Caldwell. It will discuss how medicine in the U.S. and the world turn the medical industry into a profiteering-based commerce, with the goal of creating and manipulating illness amongst the population for profit. If you're wondering how such a nefarious proposition could go unnoticed by so many people, then don't worry, you're not alone. First and foremost, let's look at what some of the causes of disease are. Toxic environments, pollution, toxic water, acidic diets, stressed physiological states of mind and body, alcohol, tobacco, excess sugar, processed foods, fried food, electromagnetic pollution, street drugs, and even pharmaceutical drugs. Yes, prescribed drugs. Don't believe me? What if I told you the side effects of big pharma drugs are hiding in plain sight? Talk to your doctor about Chantix and a support plan that's right for you. Some people have had changes in behavior, hostility, agitation, depressed mood, and suicidal thoughts or actions while taking or after stopping Chantix. If you notice agitation, hostility, depression, or changes in behavior, thinking, or mood that are not typical for you, or if you develop suicidal thoughts or actions, stop taking Chantix and call your doctor right away. Talk to your doctor about any history of depression or other mental health problems, which can get worse while taking Chantix. Some people can have allergic or serious skin reactions to Chantix, some of which can be life-threatening. If you notice swelling of face, mouth, throat, or a rash, stop taking Chantix and see your doctor right away. Tell your doctor which medicines you're taking, as they may work differently when you quit smoking. Chantix dosing may be different if you have kidney problems. The most common side effect is nausea. Patients also reported trouble sleeping and vivid, unusual, or strange dreams. Until you know how Chantix may affect you, use caution when driving or operating machinery. Chantix should not be taken with other quit smoking products. When you decide, rightly or wrongly, to go with conventional medicine, they give you a mountain of paperwork that you have to sign that releases everybody from any problem that, any, that ever happens from your treatment. And people gladly sign their lives away. Nobody goes to jail. And there's no consequences. And that's why this juggernaut continues to roll down the road, because there's no consequences for the MD. And there needs to be. But does society address the causes of disease? Not if it's not profitable to do so. On the contrary, it hurts the profits of the private medical industry to alleviate the causes of these problems, almost as much as it hurts the medical industry to actually solve the root causes of these diseases. So if you look at the facts and if you look what they know and what they don't know, you know that uh, Dr. Gary Null stated it and a lot of other people, the medical profession, the medical doctor statistically has the shortest lifespan of 56 years of age, the highest abuse rate of alcohol and drugs, the highest suicide rate, only the psychiatrist is higher. And uh, so you go to somebody that has the lowest lifespan, highest suicide rate, highest drug abuse rate, to ask them how to have, have a healthy, healthy. happy, uh, long life. If you're still doubtful at this point, then tell me, why doesn't the U.S. government legislate change related to the 480,000 deaths a year from smoking? An industry that does nothing for the greater good of the country or the world. Sure, our hospitals will treat the symptoms of heart disease and lung complications as well as it can in the less than ideal design. But the root cause of the problem itself is tobacco. 
Why would any government who cares so much about protecting its people allow big tobacco companies to continue to sell tobacco if the end result for the consumers are health complications and death? For profits, pure, plain, and simple. 480,000 deaths a year. Why is it, with technological advancement, that we are moving forward in every possible area in society, except certain areas of medical advancement? See, medical science has failed in the curing and prevention of illness, sickness, and disease. Percentage-wise, more people are getting colds, cancer, diabetes, heart disease, bodily pain, ulcers, chronic fatigue, depression, stress, anxiety, etc. than any other period of time prior in the last hundred years. This is despite the fact that higher percentages of people visit doctors, get medical diagnostics and tests ran, and take more prescription drugs than any other preceding decades prior. Medical science is a for-profit success or failure, depending on how you look at it. Uh, under Nutrified, can you talk about that a little bit? How do we know how bad off we are? Well, we're, we're in the middle of a giant health epidemic here in the United States and to a lesser extent in the world. I mean, just look around. Everybody's sick. Mm -hmm. I mean, spend an afternoon at Home Depot or Walmart. It's like the walking wounded, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, the average American currently, this is June 2011, is on 11 prescription medicines. 11 prescription medicines. This is not because we have a bad gene. This is not because we've been cursed by God. It's because we are all unwittingly eating food that's hurting us because we've had no prudent, good, science-based, clinically verified counsel about what's good food and what's bad food. And most importantly, everybody in the United States is under nutrified, and here's why. My colleague, Dr. Wallach, from 70 to 82, is in charge of $25 million of federally funded research. His research unequivocally proved, this is not arguable, this is an academic fact, that the human body has 91 essential nutrients. There are 91 essential nutrients that must be imported into the body every day, 91. 60 of the 91 are minerals, things like calcium and phosphorus and silica, right? The problem with minerals is they're only found in one place. They're in the soil. Or sometimes they're in the water, but if they're in the water, it's, they're there because they've washed into the water from the soil. The problem is there's no place in the United States because of agricultural farming and also just because of Mother Nature's geology that all 60 minerals exist. So this row of the cornfield, there might be 12 minerals. The next row, there might be 17. The next row, there might be 25. The corn only needs six to grow. The human body needs 60, six, zero. So if this is how much nutrition the human body needs to be healthy every day, this is how much that's in our food. And then the stress of life whittles away at our reserves and something breaks. And then we go to a medical doctor who gives us a prescription drug to manage the symptom. We go from bad to worse. We're going to hell in a handbasket here because we've let MDs drive the bus of medicine for the last hundred years, and that's a problem. The bogus germ theory driving allopathic medicine states that microorganisms invade our bodies and require military defense. This model of disease, the warfare model, where illness comes from an uncontrollable enemy outside of us necessitates a drug from the medical machine as our only chance of survival. We fight this imagined enemy with chemical weapons and machines just as any warfare. Allopathic medicine blames these enemy diseases on bad genes or evil germs, mysterious and deadly cancers, 
unexplained autoimmune and neurodegenerative diseases, and many more, always outside of our control, with causes unknown and no ability to address or reverse ourselves. Thus, we are dependent on the medical system to rescue us. How did this happen? The same principle applies to cancer and viral inoculations. We'll address inoculations in a future video in the series. But first, let's take a look at cancer. We have lost the war on cancer. Over $235 billion have been spent since 1971 trying to prevent and cure cancer, allegedly. But we never seem to get a cure, do we? This is because chemotherapy is a $200 billion a year industry. You touched on the American Cancer Society. What's your thought on organizations like that, the uh, Susan G. Komen Foundation? Um, there's a Breast Cancer Awareness Month. There's fundraisers every week in every town raising hundreds of millions of dollars a year, and yet we're not any closer to, this, to winning this war on cancer. What, what are your thoughts of those organizations that raise just an unbelievable amounts of money yet with no progress? First of all, to me, it's all a hoax. It's all fraud. Even if the people in it, they often think they do the right thing. But here's the answer. Where does the money go that they raise? Back to the pharmaceutical industry, back to the medical industry for research. Mm -hmm. We have 400 known cancer cures out there, natural cancer cures with no side effects. So there need, there's no need to uh, research uh, any more for the cancer cure because there are more than enough out there. And personally, having, personally being known as the person with the highest cancer cure rate in the world by, by independent studies, by, by so many experts out there, I can tell you there are so many cancer cures out there and I have seen cancer, like Dr. Tutu Simoncini with, with his book, uh, Cancer is a Fungus. He puts just baking soda, sodium bicarbonate, uh, with a, with a uh, water solution, water down solution on the cancer, and the cancer tumor disappears on contact because the white mass that every cancer has is a fungus. And if you alkalize a fungus, it instantly disappears mm -hmm. and therefore the tumor disappears. Well, the cancer with growth disappears. And we all need to really look into not walking for the cure and not buying a pink ribbon because it's all fraud. It all goes in the same people that cause your cancer, in the pockets of the same people that cause your cancer, in the pockets of the same people that live off you having cancer, mm -hmm. and um, that creating more complicated treatments and surgeries to charge more and more and more. Because today, as far as I know, if you're diagnosed with cancer and you don't have the right kind of health insurance, um, you're kind of like broke after three months. Mm -hmm. And that's what they like, because if you're broke, you are willing to do everything the government tells you to do. Mm. You have no money for a lawyer, you have no money to fight back, you have no money for research, you don't even have money anymore for alternative natural cures. Looking at cancer death rates, almost one in three people die of cancer, cancer-related illness, or cancer therapy treatment. These numbers have had insignificant variants going back to 1970 and even 1950. The percentage of deaths from cancer is actually worse than it was in the 70s and even in the 50s. For example, one of the main answers we have for cancer after all this time is chemotherapy. Did you know that the first form of chemotherapy came from mustard gas? Mustard gas is one of the number of weaponized poison gases developed by Fritz Haber, a professor at the prestigious University of Karlsruhe. Used in World War I, mustard gas is one of the most deadly chemical weapons ever deployed in battle. And because mustard gas can be absorbed through the skin, gas masks were practically useless. Even fully clothed soldiers weren't fully protected, and it could take up to six weeks to die from mustard gas. And it was a very terrible way to die. Based on mustard gas, mustard gas after the Geneva Convention is forbidden as a war chemical. It's created in the First and Second World War to kill soldiers on the battlefield. Now they put it directly into your bloodstream and after one single chemotherapy you cannot donate blood anymore or be an organ donor. What does that tell you mm -hmm. about your health? Yeah. 
And so please don't donate to any organization. 76% usually stays only in their own pockets to begin with, mm -hmm. and the rest goes usually back to the medical and pharmaceutical industry for their research on cancer, not on the cancer cure, not on curing the patient, it goes back to cancer research. Mm -hmm. A better thing to talk about in relationship to, well, I will talk about that, right? A better thing to talk about, however, is the relationship between profits and cancer in the United States. Um, there was a study that was published, I believe it was in 1994. It was a 12-year program, 12-year study. They looked at adults who had developed cancer as an adult, not childhood cancer, but adult cancer, right? And this is the main types of cancer that we get here in the United States. They did a meta-analysis of these people all around the world who developed cancer as adults for 12 years and were treated with chemo. And they looked at the results and they published the results in the Journal of Clinical Oncology. And the results, 97% of the time, chemotherapy does not work. 97% of the time, it doesn't work. So why is it still used? It's one reason and one reason only, money. If you go to a medical doctor, an MD, with a sinus infection, and that doctor prescribes an antibiotic, he gets no financial kickback. Now, if he prescribes 5,000, you know, of that antibiotic in one month, the drug company that makes it might send him to Cancun for a conference, right? Mm -hmm. But he gets no direct remuneration. It's not with, with chemotherapeutic drugs. It's different. Chemotherapeutic drugs are the only classification of drugs that the prescribing doctor gets a direct cut of. So if your doctor prescribes chemotherapy for you, here's how it goes, more or less. The doctor buys it from the pharmaceutical company for $5,000, sells it to the patient for $12,000, insurance pays $9,000, and the doctor pockets the $4,000 difference. And there ought to be a law. The only reason chemotherapy is used is because doctors make money from it, period. It doesn't work 97% of the time. If Ford Motor Company made an automobile that exploded 97% of the time, would they still be in business? No. This is uh, the tip of the iceberg of the control that the pharmaceutical industry has on us. We, most people have no idea of this at all. Now, I wrote a book. It's called The MD Emperor Has No mm -hmm. Clothes, right? In my book, I have a bulleted list of 10 questions that every cancer patient should ask their doctor. 10 questions. I've had patients kicked out, literally, kicked out of the oncologist's office because the doctor was PO'd that the patient was asking them these questions. And these are just common sense questions. Cancer treatment in the United States, we have lost the war on cancer. We have lost the war on cancer. Why? Because cancer is not a reductionistic phenomenon. Cancer is a holistic phenomenon. And when you try to bring a reductionistic methodology like drugs and surgery to bear on a holistic phenomenon, you will completely miss the boat each and every time. You cannot do it. Medical doctors are like colorblind art critics. They can see that that's a boat. They can see the black and white outline, but they're completely blind to all of the colors and textures that make up the substance of the thing. It's no difference with cancer. The reason that people get cancer in the United States and the reason that we have completely lousy outcomes is because medical doctors are driving the research bus. When Women get together and do a 5K run for breast cancer. All of that money, do you think any of that money goes to nutritional research? Do you mm -hmm. think any of that money goes to homeopathic research or acupuncture or traditional Chinese medicine or naturopathic research? No. All of it goes to drugs and surgery, which do not work. Now, why aren't those women running for selenium? If every girl in this country took... 200 micrograms of selenium in one generation, we'd eliminate breast cancer by 82%. That's a big number. Why aren't we doing that? 
because medicine in the United States is a for-profit industry and most people are completely unaware of this and most people bow down to the altar of MD-directed high-tech medicine at their own demise. If you're still watching and wondering the solution, the solution is fixing the cancer by treating it as a holistic phenomenon and solving the problem with answers that have been profitably suppressed. When the body develops cancer, it is a sign that the body's immune system is losing the battle against mutations inside the body that have multiplied out of control. The war inside your body cannot be won by throwing more poison at it. The war can only be won by giving the body what it needs to fight the cancer off. The, in my experience, every cancer can be cured in 2 to 16 weeks. Some cancers can be cured in minutes because every doctor in the world that's in office for 20 years or longer knows cases of spontaneous healing. Getting your body alkaline with, with good calcium, with good nutrition, with good trace supplements, uh, trace minerals, will help to alkalize the body. So that means the second you are alkaline, the cancer already stops. It can take a couple of days, a couple of weeks, but mm -hmm. it stops. You get the, the body to a healing pH level, which the pH scale goes from 0 to 14, so 7 is neutral, and you need to be slightly alkaline. 7.36 is ideal. But in the healing phase, you should go up to 7.5. It's a bit, little bit over-alkalizing, the system. A great friend of mine, Dr. Uh, Martin in Germany, is using uh, oxygen more step therapy, for example, where you take the blood out, you get ionized oxygen, and you lead the blood back in. And you do this 12 times, and you have basically brand new blood like a, like a newborn baby. So you already eliminated the lack of oxygen. You see the blood coming out looks like black. They put the oxygen in and it becomes pink. And it's like mm -hmm. legal doping. You, you get it and you <laughs> feel so energized and you're so vital. What my MDs in, in Europe used uh, is um, vitamin C injections, intravenous vitamin C injections, 100 cc's a day, um, three times a week. Uh, that's what we used in, in certain cases more often. And very often, believe it or not, in my personal experience, the tumors or the cancerous growth was basically gone within a couple of days. Yeah. And because vitamin C is so powerful and one of the greatest healers out there, you can ne fix nearly every heart problem, cardiovascular problem with, with vitamin C, they want to take it off the market. So uh, it's basically it's going to become a prescription medication and then it's synthetic and will not work anymore, like vitamin E. Vitamin E basically helps you to cure uh, very easy and fast blood pressure problems uh, in any way, shape, or form. That's why they, they, they made a study with artificially created vitamin E, mm -hmm. chemical created vitamin E, said, see, it doesn't work. No, of course not. <laughs> Chemicals don't work. Nature works. Mm -hmm. If nature creates a problem, nature creates a solution. Very simple and easy. If it didn't exist 100 years ago, you don't need it today. And um, when you want to help somebody to educate themselves, to eliminate his or her own cancer really, really fast. I would basically start instantly with a vegan diet or with a raw food diet. My friend Paul Nissan is one of the greatest uh, raw food chefs. He has a fantastic books out there about raw food, so it's accessible for a couple of bucks, how to do it. He has free videos all over his website. Mm -hmm. And I would go instantly on a raw food diet. I would go uh, make sure if I don't have a very rare kidney disease to drink a gallon of water a day with half a teaspoon of sea salt in it a day because we need salt for every body function. We need electricity. And this electricity can only be um, uh, produced with enough salt, basically. If you just <coughs> research all these people out there that are curing cancer, why don't you go to people that produce results and say, how did you do that? Let us research that. Mm -hmm. Why did they get rid of Gerson when Gerson cured all these people just by changing their diet or the Budwig diet uh, with a cottage cheese and or, or it, it just um, sodium bicarbonate, baking soda with maple syrup. You warm it up a little and it becomes kind of like a candy kind of a thing and, mm -hmm. and you eat that to alkalize your system. Because if you just look at the facts, Otto Warburg and Max Planck got a Nobel Prize in Medicine in 1911 and 1936.
by proving cancer cannot exist in an alkaline oxygen rich environment. So why didn't we move on from there? Why didn't we do more research and saying, oh, how can we get the body alkaline? Mm -hmm. Oh, we just need chlorophyll. <clears throat> Everything is green. Juice it, eat it. Your body will really be floated, flooded with oxygen. And how do you get it uh, mm, uh, uh, alkaline? The green too, because everything that's green is full with mm -hmm. uh, calcium. That's when elephant or a vegetarian, like like a cow, gets their strong bones from from everything that's green. And of course, there's good calcium. You cannot use a coral calcium anymore because, thanks to the nuclear reactor mm -hmm. accident, now the coral calcium is radioactive, and you don't really want this anymore. So mm -hmm. everything from Okinawa you cannot touch any longer, or you, at least you shouldn't. And uh, but there are so many easy ways. If you have a gallon of water a day and it was half a teaspoon of pink salt in it a day, Himalayan salt, it still has mm -hmm. all the, uh, the trace minerals. <clears throat> and most of all, if you uh, just look for nature, if, if it didn't exist 150 years ago, you do not need it. You don't want it, you don't mm -hmm. need it. You know, I also think that whenever there's an automobile accident, the police should question the people involved with the accident, what prescription medications are you taking? Because prescription medications make you f feel and act funny. They do, even at appropriate dosages. But this is an undiscovered statistic because nobody wants to look at it. And, you know, I'm of the opinion that chemotherapy kills just as many people as cancer does. Well, I had a patient in uh, Rhode Island. She had uh, rectal cancer, and she went for conventional treatment. She also did nutritional support, right? And they botched the radiation that they gave her. It burned a hole through the rectum into the vaginal vault, and she died from an infection. See, we are Americans. We are not our government. Our government has nothing to do with us. And everything that's out there, to me, in my experience and my thinking of the law, is treason to begin with. Taking away healing substances, healing treatments. It's murdering or raging a war against your own people. This is, by my definition, treason, high treason. And I don't even know how they get away with this any longer, but there's more and more people waking up. There's more and more people being ready to fight and willing to fight because Everybody now has one or two people in this family that died of cancer. Mm -hmm. Now we have people, uh, uh, parents, their children get taken away because they refuse vaccination or they refuse uh, killing murderous treatments for cancer. And if you just look at the information sheet that comes with the chemotherapy, it says they are death mm -hmm. as a side effect. It says they are death as a side effect.